un cuello. 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 Steel header. Some chewing. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Tab one. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Tab one. I hope you have a document E three slash three one six nine. Nineteen ninety one publication. Pol Pot and Kim Sampong. Can you confirm that you have that document, please? Look, man, exam or no? I've got one with an email that was a D number. D number was D three six six slash seven point one point one four. Now described as a a paper, but can you explain what stage you were in your academic career or? What was going on um, academically in your life when you began your research, which led to the publication of the book? And the publication of the book time in 1991. Um, yes, it says on the first footnotes. This was done primarily while I was a research fellow at the Australian National University. It included some stuff. I gathered previous points in my academic career. The bulk of the research and the writing was done while I was at the Australian National University. Thank you. I'd like to start, please, on uh, using the pages in the top right hand of each page to page uh, seven. This is English ERN 0087 Khmer, Khmer, zero zero seven one one three seven seven, and French zero zero seven two two zero seven one, and it's on the topic of intellectuals. And you write retrospectively. Michael Vickery has also reported how Cambodian intellectuals were lulled into a false sense of security about the Communist Party of Cambodia's intentions by Q. Sompon's contrived prominence. He writes that one teacher he interviewed after the party's rule was overthrown on the 7th of January 1979 told him that up to 1975 he had sympathised with the revolutionaries and in particular admired Q. Sompon. He therefore had confidence for the moment in the rationality of Communist Party of Cambodia actions and in particular felt no fear or apprehension about the future. And you reference there Michael Vickery, Cambodia, 1975 to 1982. Again, just a little bit, Michael Vickery, connection with him, how you got this to be a footnote in the paper. Thank you. 
Chấm lời Michael Vickery Còn trên đại phụ vật vị tu Chuyện cha ông Phí Cảm Bởi Chí Cả nghĩa đầm bốn Cô gọt phơ cả ông Phí Sơ Mãi Phục Cả là Cảm Bởi Chí Cột bần to Từ nâng nhiều bài Sơ Mãi Thầm Mây Hãy nâng Cột cả bọc Nhìn ảnh bọc 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 Hãy nâng xong tổng phó đã đàn ní Sát phía nhá Under a heading Q Sampon and the quote liberation close quote. In what appears to have been a calculated abuse of trust in which he was held, Q Sampon actively helped just before the end of the war to set up long null military personnel and civil servants for easy execution. The esteem in which he was held meant that some of them allowed themselves to become sitting ducks for murder. Thus, as the Communist Party of Campuchia advanced towards an all-out military victory during the first four months of 1975, Q Sampong twice signaled those who had been fighting against it that only the seven top leaders amongst them would be executed upon defeat. And footnote 25 lists, uh, lists of people, and you carry on. On the 24th to 25th of February, Q Sampon chaired the Second National Congress, a meeting of members of Grunk who resided inside the country and 273 representatives of Funk associations and the army. The Congress declared that the seven traitors must die, but that other high-ranking Khmer Republic personalities could join the Sinuk side. Then, on the 1st of April, a little more than two weeks before Phnom Penh was captured, Q Songpon spoke in a live broadcast over the Communist Party-run radio. He attacked the seven traitors by name, but appealed to the officers and men of the Khmer Republic Armed Forces to lay down their arms and join the Sahinat side. You're referencing there the chairing of the Second Congress and then a broadcast on the 1st of April. Can I ask first of all about the 1st of April broadcast? Um, there's not a specific footnote to do with that. Can you remember what source material you were looking at in, the, in respect of the 1st of April 1975 broadcast? Or was, were you in Cambodia at that time, did you hear it? How does that appear in the paper? Um, well, the footnote, as you see, is to acknowledge the political the I think, for this because where I was at the time, the FJ National University did not have a complete set of the foreign broadcast information as translation of radio broadcast. I was in Cambodia on the first day. We didn't in those days have access to the the FBIS daily report, but the embassy did make available the type version of those broadcasts, and I read them every day. So I can be fairly certain I read it at the time, but I didn't have that piece of paper in hand when I wrote this particular piece. So instead, I relied upon Carney's chronology, which was based on the FBIS translations. And so we're clear what we all call the Fibis foreign broadcast information in this paper. You did read those at the time back in 1975, but they weren't available to you when you were writing this paper, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. I just want to ask a question about some these Fibis broadcasts. I mean, uh, this particular broadcast is E3 slash 118. But 
I'm just going to get a picture really about how regularly these broadcasts were coming out and how you were able to be reading the Fibbis material. Do you understand the question? Yes, I can understand the question. The U.S. government personnel who did the monitoring of these broadcasts and they sent listened to these broadcasts, recorded them, and translations uh, and those were uh, those teletype translations were considered uh, public uh, documents uh, within the U.S. government system. Um, so one could go but every day, as I did, not every day, but in order to, uh, often enough that I could read every day's output to a reading room in the U.S. Embassy on hand to see what Fibbis translated. And then some but not all of those teletype translations were then decompiled into something called a daily report, which was kind of in a magazine format and which was deposited in the library of the world, not Australia. But certainly we now have that. There's also a British version of the carbon copy as far as Cambodian concerned, so called summary of world broadcasts, which had even fewer items in it, but essentially it was the same text. I just want to ask a question about that. I know what you're speaking about, but I just want to explain for the judges. Certain documents on the case file are Fibbis broadcasts, and then there's a copy of the same text. With SWB in the top. That's, I think, what you're doing. Now, I think you said that you came to Cambodia in 1973. Uh, yeah, first time in 1969, but only to pass through uh, to war in 1973. Can I ask, um, was this in the capacity as a journalist, a reporter, or, if you like, what was the reason, purpose, background to you coming to Cambodia in 1973? Um, I finished my bachelor's degree at Cornell in Asian Studies. Um, I wanted to be a journalist. Um, in fact, I went first to Hong Kong and then to Bangkok to try and make my living as a journalist working on China or on Thailand. In Hong Kong, there was too much competition. In Thailand, there was no story. So, uh, uh, a kindly Hong Kong veteran journalist in Bangkok said, you should go to Cambodia uh, because there's not a lot of competition uh, and there's a story there that virtually writes itself. So, I followed that advice. Uh, uh, and my recollection is that I arrived in May of 1973. Can you remember what the first couple of events were that you reported? Um, I think the first one was in February. Well, the, the, the big story at that juncture was the fact that um, U.S. Congress had a, a, a past I guess what was a law, um, um, ordering an end to U.S. bombing uh, of Cambodia. And the cut-off date for that uh, end was 15 August 1973. Um, and there was a widespread expectation that as soon as the American bombing ended, the Khmer Rouge would march in Phnom Penh, and the Khmer Rouge would collapse. 
สาธารณรัฐแม่นั่งดูลมนุ่งเชียแต่สนามสายแต่ยังยุ่งอาชีพดำเนินออดดำเนินกระกาลนอดำเนินกระกาลนอดในทาอำนาจผู้ประกอบการกาชลายชลองสาธารณรัฐผู้เกี่ยวมาชราผู้เกี่ยวมาปิ้งมาจำมือทำไมก็พร้อมโจดูได้ฉันหายผู้เกี่ยวกับบ้านบัดเล่ามันเอาขยมโจลตะขนงกาเงียนุบานเราได้ก็ทำเงียนมนุษย์ชราหนุกก็ทำได้สักยังมันเมียนกลางเงียนก็ทำได้ลำนั่งหล่อก็ทำเงียนมนุษย์ชราหนุกก็ทำได้ช่วยเฮาขยมก็บานชอบตึกกลางเงียนมันตอมตอมบาดเชี่ยวมุกตำแหน่งปิงมองเฮาได้ขยมตึกกลางเงียนเชื่อมวิทย์อันดีซีเชื่อบันไดตัวตัวนักชุดของเด็กเขาเองสาวปรมินไทม์สังเกตแมกกาซีนอะไรไม่ก็ห้องตอนมองที่การนุ่มให้สาวปรมินไทม์นักบันเชิงเต้าให้เรื่องราวของนั่นคือท่ายังตรึงนึกช้ำตัวการมันต่อติดกันเนาะ I just want you to try and paint a picture about sort of journalism world 1973 to 1973 What was the extent of the contact between the members of the journalistic reporting community? Can you give us a feel of sort of how many people were regularly reporting? And sort of who was going out in, into the field? Do you understand what I mean by into the field? Just try and paint a picture, can you please? Of the sort of world you were in and the sort of people you were with. อาชีพเดลุกเพื่อการอุตสาหกรรมนุ่งเต้าเมียนนาคลาหนึ่งขนมพนมปิ้งคราวพนมปิ้งดำไปโปรโมทพอร์มีนเชดามจำลายเมีย
Done the BA, spent a little bit of time uh, doing research uh, in the uh, National uh, Library um, because I was interested uh, in the, uh, sort of the political uh, historical uh, background of the Khmer uh, Rouge uh, 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 and the origins of the 1940s and 1950s. So I did some archival work, I did some field work in the battlefield, uh, and I did some work in the, sort of in, the, in the Khmer Republic political scene in Phnom Penh. Thank you. You mentioned American bombing, 15th of August 1973. Did you see, did others tell you, was there information coming about continued bombing well beyond that date or just beyond that date? American bombing. No, at, 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 at that point, uh, the, the, U, the U.S. Air Force bombing completely uh, ended. There was no, uh, however, the, the Khmer Republic Armed Forces, uh, uh, Air Force uh, bombing continued as did the Air Force bombing uh, uh, continued as did the uh, Khmer Republic ground uh, troops. You can ask you some, uh, more, some more questions, questions about this later, but I, don't want, I can't uh, go through day uh, by day, obviously, every day that you were here. But can I ask the question this way, and you tell me if it doesn't help the way I ask. You arrive in May 1973, is that correct? And I think you said you left in April 1975, but I can't remember the... In April. Can you please clarify? Yes, it was the 11th of April. And Neil Davis, who I just mentioned, and I uh, flew out with the American Federation of I want to ask you about the battlefield from May 1973 to the 11th of April 1975. With this specific question in mind. Did you yourself see or did others tell you or was information coming to you in help us all about what was happening? ตามมีนโยบายการล้างក្នុងการในในเรื่องของการล้างคือที่ I think the answer has to be no, not off the top of my head. Uh, there may be stuff in my notebooks, but I, I don't have any specific recollection that I can give you now. You've spoken about one event, 15th of August 1973. Can I ask you to try and distill what the next one or two important events ហេតុការណ៍សំខាន់ខាងមួយពីបន្ទាប់ពីនោះមកដែលយកការនឹងរាយការណ៍ពីហេតុការណ៍នោះទេអឺចំឡាយអាន្តីលុនដល់ដេ
ports which were on the evacuation. The American evacuation of U.S. personnel and others who wanted to or managed to go on. Now, in this period, were you living most of the time in Phnom Penh if you weren't out in the field, or were you moving around the country? Uh, no, I lived in Phnom Penh, initially on the south. The west side of the city, the outskirts of Phnom Penh, uh, I moved out of there because we took a lottery in Phnom Penh, shell, shell uh, to the center of town to be away from the 105 shelling coming from the southwest and the 107 uh, rockets um, so I set myself up smack in the middle of town to Again, one of those uh, paint the picture questions. Uh, what I mean by this uh, is you're living in Phnom Penh. You've got shells coming in. How regularly? How frightened or not? Just give us a bit of a feeling. You're in a house in Phnom Penh or somewhere and shells are coming in. Just bring this to life, please. You sound like my Time magazine editors. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, it was, it was certainly scary to be under shell fire when we were on the southwest side of town. Uh, I had to dig a bunker under my house, sometimes living in a bunker, learn how many meters of dirt I needed at one time to get the 105 shells uh, to come in. Uh, um, similarly, the coming in from the east, one could see what's now the waterfront, and hear those rockets being fired and see them coming in over our heads and then landing in the center of town around the room, people being killed. Um, and the city was also, you know, the, the socioeconomic situation in the city was very fraught and intense. As everybody knows, there were a lot of people who came in from the countryside and um, the, uh, the political situation was primarily anti-government, uh, particularly among students, sort of a classic classic revolutionary situation, if you will. The students and the workers were anti-government. Uh, the middle class, such as it was, was very tiny. It was mostly also anti-government. Um, and this sort of leads into some of the stuff that's referred to in, 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 in the document was the beginning of this discussion. Um, I mean, I think I, I refer in, the, in, 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 in this in, in this document. I, I, it's been a while since I looked at it. Refer in this document to an unpublished Time magazine story I did about the Khmer Rouge leadership. Um, there was another story I was asked to do, which was never got published. Maybe there weren't enough atmospherics. Um, and that was simply what uh, people in Phnom Penh thought uh, was going to happen no? when the Khmer Rouge came in. Um, and this was in the context uh, of, a, uh, of a time in which there was an enormous debate going on in the States, um, focused primarily on Vietnam, which Cambodia was, of course, famously only a ສາຍຈັ່ງ Part of the background to the thinking that's in this piece uh, is that for the most part, people thought, 
พิจารณาที่ทางออตเตอร์ชาวบ้านตีเขาตาม the main or one of the several reasons why people thought was that they believed that Khmer were led by Khieu Sampon Huyun, whom many people liberals and leftists allowed thought were good, honest, patriotic, People who would do well by the country, do well by the population. There was a kind of general sense already then that the Khmer Rouge were somehow different, and there was an alternative view which was that they were different but worse. And I remember one relatively sophisticated intellectual to whom I spoke about this matter who said, the question is not whether the Khmer Rouge will be sort of different, but whether they will be different in a kind of Yugoslavian way, that is to say relatively moderate for communists, or an Albanian kind of way, that is to say relatively radical. And the general opinion seemed to be the former. They would be relatively moderate. So that was the widespread perception, the relatively widespread perception. Story never sold out. Two questions. Sapinya, can you some new P? Nice. Sound to you like a silly question. Ah, one, just some new look at that. Some new ram, left on that. Can you try to solve it? When you're in your dugout, no pay that you have to make. And you've got rockets coming in from two different directions. Who were firing the rockets, and how did you find out? Ah, net na, che net long crop nu. ตะลุกดังได้ตีครอบนุพลาวมาปีหน้าเนี่ยนาเนี่ยพลาวชำลายเอาเทอร์รี่ไฟร์หรือวันอ่าวันอ่าวันอ่าวันอ่าวันอ
The 105s came from the special zone commanded by Ian Lorne, alias Nat, and the 107 millimeters from the east were by the East Zone Division 1. Whose troops or what troops? I don't mean overall, under what global command, overall command. Uh, these are Khmer Rouge zonal divisions operating under the overall direction of the general staff, which was at this time uh, chaired by, already chaired by Sun Sen and answered to a military command post to head by Pol Pot. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it, um, it appears to me, or it might appear, that there is a, um, a mixture going on of eyewitness testimony of the witness of what he saw incoming in 75 in uh, of information as to who was commanding these various troops. Now, um, I understand that, but I think it's it difficult to make that distinction while we have uh, the present testimony going on. I agree with Madani friend, that's uh, absolutely right. Back in 1975, when it was when the show was going on, well, let's, let's make that the first question to clarify this. Can you help us? When you first directly became aware of shelling that was affecting you or affecting Phnom Penh generally, what year, what month, or can you only be general in this respect? Um. Probably dry season of 73, 74, uh, but in a bigger way, initially, in a bigger way in the dry season of 74, uh, but that starting in late 73 and running into the early part of 74, and then running into early 75, and then running into early 75, early 75 right up to January. Uh, sorry. April 75. Now, you've said something about the troops who were shelling. You've mentioned the Japanese attaché, and you were saying that was the source for where they were coming from. Can we clarify that first? Is that correct? Uh, yes, there was the order of battle information. That was shared uh, with me by the Japanese military attaché. Uh, the source was the military intelligence. Um, there was also some material, again, originating with um, FANC, the Khmer, Khmer, Khmer Republic military and civilian intelligence, which was early um, organograms, organizational charts um, prepared, on, prepared by either by Khmer Republic intelligence, either military or civilian, about the structure and organization of the Khmer Rouge political and military, uh, um, which identified leaders of certain political administrative areas uh, and associated particular military units with names, commanders, those administrative units. So the basic sort of outline of Khmer Rouge structure and organization, the sector, the sectors, and so on, was already known in 
để cái bạn đăng đôi cho hai về năng về năng cứ đăng đôi cho hai về năng đi cái bộ miền bắc này nghe xong ngắn đại bản đó mọi người quan du thiết thành tu chụp bọn hay coi mọi đó đó là sang tu làm rồi hay bộ miền này kia mà đó không nhầm đại I want to ask questions about two documents or two natures of documents. An order of battle and an organogram. You say that information was leaked to you by the US Embassy. You've mentioned sectors, districts, and the like, but in terms of the question I'd asked earlier, you were talking about a military structure. And you mentioned two commanders whose names I can't remember now. Uh, in Lawn, alias Nat. And then you said something about Son Sen, and you mentioned another person as well. Can I ask this? From the order of battle material, or the organogram material, can you remember whose name was at the top of either of those documents, or whose name was next down, or, if it helps, go upwards from the commander you mentioned? và xong chấp đam pi mê chia ca để lộ để dây chung bánh mình thấy là người ta đào cổng pool nữa Well, in at least some of these materials Bây giờ hỏi nó hay cực xa nè Cứ thả xa lọc xóa thất nộp cổng pool này And that was something which there was some dispute within the intelligence community about who was accurate that was. But after the recording of the recording, that Sarin, who had been in the on the fringes of the party apparatus and then defected to the Khmer Republic side. Did some reports from American public intelligence and unpublished book, where he identified Sarot Sar as the head of the communist movement. That was pretty much accepted in the intelligence community. For not, as it was the special zone. My recollection is in those days, Warren Beth was identified as the special zone, but by one of his other aliases, I think Sok Tuk, the alias used in the documents. Certainly, Tamok was mentioned. In the east, certainly Sao Pum was mentioned as the head of the zone. I think by his one of his one of his aliases, Vana. And the other zone secretaries for the most part are accurately identified. Newman in the northeast, Newman in the northwest. So as I say, it was fairly fairly accurate. For the most part, it was fairly accurate. Mà mình bàn I think that's that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of 
Ba Eloni kita Pepon tentang organograms The Japanese military attaché Did you have more or less access than other reporters Do you in a special position Was this generally available Can you help on that question please I don't really know what the competition had. Um, I think there were, there were some people in some embassies who seemed to appreciate the fact that I was a bit of an archive that I was looking ខ្ញុំដូចជាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាតាត
where the broadcasts were actually Occasionally, there were broadcasts that were presented in the voice of Kyo Sun Pong or some of the else names. But a lot of it is just by announcement. I want to concentrate on the broadcast Nhưng by Q Sampon or in the name of Q Sampon. Can you tell us? You've mentioned talk of battlefields, you've mentioned talk of policy. Can you remember when there was a broadcast by Q Sampon or on behalf of Q Sampon? Did the subject matter differ from what you've just said, or can you elaborate? Um, frankly, not specifically, no. I mean, it's, it's all, and it's all jumbled up in my memory with my contemporaneous reading of the Fibis and my subsequent reading, rereading, 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 rereading um, of, of those broadcasts. I can't separate them in my mind when that information got in there. In respect of the broadcasts by Q Song Pong or on behalf of Q Song Pong, one, two, half a dozen, eight, ten, can't remember. What was the sort of number, just roughly? I've taken you on a big side route from Pol Pot and Q Song Pong, which is document number E3 slash 3169. So can we return to that? Mr. Header, please, Look, just header, to remind you again, file three, index one. And we were on page eight. Same ERNs as previously given. Now, I asked you a specific question about the 1st of April, broadcast over Communist, Communist Party run radio. It was the information about Q Song Pong chairing the Second National Congress. It may be a difficult question, but you can remember whether that was from a broadcast or FIBIS, or can you now say? Um, I mean, this was a pretty big Thing at the time. I, I'm, I think I can say that I can remember reading the blue teletype Fibis version of this, of this reportage on this purported Congress sitting there in that U.S. Embassy reading them. Again, on uh, same document still, still the same page, so E3 slash 3169. You started in the paper to talk about the Communist Party of Kampuchea's policy vis-à-vis -vis the officers and men of the defeated army and many of the Khmer Republic's civil servants. I don't think it's fair that I read the next words because the rest of the page was based largely on confessions. But on top of the next page, which is English 0008, French 0072 On this topic, you said, there is also documentary evidence of the involvement in executions of a military unit that entered Phnom Penh from the Special Zone, and which after the war was designated Division 703. This is in the form of an order signed by the Division Secretary to execute people, mostly Khmer Republic Army officers in the division's custody. 
stated the 4th of June 1975, and it reads, all the 17 persons have been assessed by the party, and the party has decided they are to be exterminated. The comrades are asked to implement this policy of the party. footnote 30, you will see at the uh, bottom in the footnotes references PIN, decision 4th of June 1975, and then a copy of this document was kindly provided to the author, you, by David Hawke. Again, a little bit pleased about David Hawke and how you came into possession of this document. David Hawke, uh, was a executive director of Amnesty International United States section. After having left that post, uh, came to Southeast Asia. Worked, I believe for a religious NGO based out of Thailand. Um, and developed an interest in in Cambodia. ហើយរៀបចងក្រងអ្វីដែលបានកើតឡើងនៅក្នុងប្រទេសកម្ពុជាពីរឿងនេះឡើងហើយគាត់បានមកទៀតអ៊ែស៊ុនីវ៉ាន់ <coughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, same page in English. Khmer has moved on one, French the same. Heading. Q Sampon under Pol Pot in power. In May 1975, the Communist Party of Cambodia held a congress and it confirmed Q Sampon's membership in the Central Committee. He remained a Central Committee member throughout the period that the Communist Party held power. But it is, uh, he is believed not to have been elevated to membership in the Standing Committee while the party was still in power. Although the exact composition of this seven to nine man body between 1975 and 1978 is still not known with complete certainty, Q Sampon has never been identified as among the possible members. However, minutes of Standing Committee quorum held in 1975 and 1976 revealed that he regularly attended them. It's the footnote in support of this, footnote 53, uh, sorry, 33, and you state the minutes of meetings of the Standing Committee, and then you give, I'll give the dates. 2nd November 1975, 22 February 1976, 11 March 1976, 17 May 1976, and 30 May 1976. All this Q-Sampon is present. These documents are kindly provided to the Chandler. The point of the question here, Mr. Heder, is this. At this stage, in, I think it's 1991 when we wrote this paper, you're mentioning here only five records of standing committee minutes showing attendance by Q-Sampon. So is it right that at this stage, when you were writing the paper, You'd only seen the five that you mentioned in the minutes in the footnote 33. Um, I, the answer to that, I think, has to be I guess. Um, I suppose that those were the ones that 
You then go on talking about the anomaly of him not being a formal member of the standing committee, but actually attending meetings and new stages. Uh, this must be viewed in the light of subsequent developments, particularly the purge by execution of standing committee members who were accused of being Vietnamese agents because Pol Pot knew or suspected that they opposed his policies and leadership. And at, at, 19, at, at footnote 34, you mentioned the people who that refers to. Is that correct? ຈຸມມຸມນູໄດ້ຢູ່ຕົນນີ້ຕາມນີ້ຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕາມຕ
The opposition to Pol Pot was stronger even than in the Central Committee. In an interview with the author on the 4th of August 1980, he alleged that Khmer agents who were the Vietnamese infiltrated into the Central Committee didn't reach half of its membership, but in the Standing Committee it was almost half. The first question is, is that what you've written in the book? And then I'm going to take you to another document. Well, yes, that's certainly what I've written in the book. Same file, tab six. Thank you, Mr. President. Just make <coughs> a question of clarification. Uh, in my document, it is always page 9 that the cause was from. Um, just to um, uh, prevent confusion. Uh, it, I have in front of me um, E3 slash 3169, but I'm page 9. I think it's the same document and another reference. Uh, if it helps, I've got E3 slash 3169 as the document. And then the page I'm on for the English ERN is 0008774. I think my learned friend, can he indicate if he's looking at one that appears in the published version, which was D366 stroke 7.1.14, as there are two versions on case map or the case file. There is the published version, which is quite black and quite grainy, and then the better copy in plain plain black and white typescript is also available under E3 slash 3169. Does that help? Well, my ERN number is ERN number 000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000